I got into the craziest altercation with my dad, bro. He started talking so wild to me. I reached for my hip. I had that thing on me. I ain't had the, I ain't had the pistol on me. Nah, but I had that. I had that. But what you do though? What happened? Man, he was talking, and I looked at his plate because he was eating. Like this is a real story. Yes. The greatest American alive. So he's sitting there eating his food, and I'm watching him eat his food, and I look at his plate, and I see a steak knife, and I see him looking at me, looking at the steak knife, because I'm being real, I'm being real offensive, okay? I'm being as offensive as any person can be to another person. So I'm watching him, watching his eyes. I look at, I see him look at that plate. I said, "You ain't got to worry about sticking me, nigga." Shit. And so I went for my hip. Next thing you know, I'm bleeding, huh? I got blood all on me, running all down me. I said, "Goodness gracious, huh?" What happened though? All I remember that I got cut. <laughs> That's all. I remember that I got cut here. I was taught a very specific thing. My father told me that if a man says these words to you, he's trying to harm you and or kill you. Now, if you train me like this and then you use those words against me, all I know is one thing in my entire life. He ain't never used these words against me ever before. And so for whatever happened on this day, on this day, he has some on your mind. And when you said it, I want to take your life. You trained me that way. You raised me that way. Well, let me know what the words is, because I don't ever want to say the words on accident. <laughs> hey, if you, if you ever call a man a bitch. Oh, yeah, I don't worry about that. Intent matters, you know? Intent matters. And Trauma. We... Trauma matters. What you've been through matters. These trigger words and these different experiences, and you have been conditioned. My words were, hey, he trained me. He told me if this thing happens, then this is how you respond. I even let it walk a, a few times because I was like, hey, man, I don't know. We'll, you know, sippy, sippy. I don't use any substance as an excuse. My behavior is my behavior no matter what I'm doing. I acknowledge that. I stand on that. I'm not going to try to hide behind any any substance. People be like, oh, was y'all drinking? Y'all was drinking? Man, we always drink, and that's what we do. We drink. And those words, those combination of words have never, ever came out of his mouth when we were drinking. And so what made today any different? So how do we move forward? Everyone was all hysterical. My mother and my sisters, they was all hysterical. Everyone got their hands in the air and they're looking at me. I'm like, man, I know for certain y'all know exactly how I was trained. Y'all know exactly what I am. And for you to expect me to be anything different than what I am, that's a problem. If you can't accept me for my whole self, then I don't know how to proceed forward. Because going forward, I'm going to continue to be the exact same person. And if you put me in that situation again, one person might not be walking away. But what about society, though? Because society doesn't necessarily accept you for who you are. They try to fit you in the regular title. Oh, you're black. You're white. You're gray, you're brown, whatever you want to call it. Every experience I have is an individual experience. With every person I meet, it's an individual experience. And I'm going to handle that person with, with whatever energy is required. I have a little principle inside my mind. I will meet or exceed whatever the energy is. And this is based on me understanding what, what's about to happen. You got big energy, man. I have to meet or exceed your energy. I have to. I mean, that's cool. But what about this, though? Like, what about shifting the energy? You don't necessarily want to meet. I'm just going to use positive and negative, right? I'm just using those as terms. But when you use positive and positive together, big energy and big energy together, you get bigger energy, right? So you use negative energy with negative energy, you get more negative energy. But to shift the dynamic, you have to meet it with opposite sides of the spectrum. Look, more specifically, when we're talking about human behavior, we're going to have to do some very specific things. Either number one, I'm going to have I have to persuade you or number two, I have to manipulate you. But that's that's shifting the energy. It's playing cognitive games. I'm thinking one step ahead of you. But in order for me to outthink you, that's me using more energy than you're using because you're operating at a base level. Why couldn't it just be communication, though? All these things, man, that'd be wonderful if people were oper operating on that type of level. But like I said, we got preconceived ideas. We got biases. We have trauma. And, you, and all this stuff, there's no way that you can communicate your whole life experience to me when I just met you. There's no way. I don't know the things that you're prejudiced against. I don't know the things that you have like a traumatic experience against. I have no those reference points are yours but it gets weird somebody were to give all that information and what they've been through at one time like i can't tell the world <laughs> like not, not not the world but i can't meet somebody at the store at the park and say hey man you know i'm on child support um i just got out of jail man and you know um my father yeah he's a dope fiend and my mother oh man she's never there for me oh yeah my uh my my grandmother this was uh my 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 uncle did this to me, man. But you know what? We're here today. And how you doing? Can I get your number? Hell no. That's being a chronic oversharer, right? And so I'm just saying, so when you're dealing with humans 
You have to, like, when you say shift energy, you have to be able to understand where this person is coming from. And that takes, damn, being attentive. You have to be extremely attentive just to body language, eyes, tone, presence. Are they standing up with their shoulders back? Are they speaking with confidence? Is this an insecure person? Is it an extrovert, an introvert? You have to process all this information when you're having any type of dialogue with other folks. I'm analyzing this in real time. And so I have to be real careful the people I have around me. I have to watch all these behaviors just to protect myself. I'm a black man in America, bro. <laughs> what that looks like. I can be completely self-confident in who I am and walk into the room like I'm just a regular person. But when I walk into the room, every person, including black people, see a five foot eight, 205 pound black man with tattoos on his body with a beard. And so their preconceived idea already before I open my mouth they're not thinking about this is a good person. This is a person that served this country. This is this is an altruistic person. They're, they have no idea. There's no reference point. All they see is a pit bull looking ass nigga. That's all they see. And that's what the black man is to America. We just some fucking giant ass pit bulls. That's how they see us. Hyper aggressive, extra muscular, extra physical. They just see us as goddamn raging animals. And that's a hard concept to live up to. And every time you walk in the room, they see the most dangerous thing they ever saw in their life. Shit, I'm feeling trauma just listening to it, tell you the truth. I'm like, God damn, man. I thought I was just a strong-ass poodle. You know? <laughs> I, I was maybe a strong-ass poodle or something. I'm like, damn, man, a pit bull. But I, I get it. What everybody believe you to be, this is who you are. Uh, You come from the hood. But you're not doing hood things, so you're not hood. Everybody has this, the younger generation, they have this thing that I came up from the mud. I came up from this. I did this. I did that. But they lived in the suburbs. And, but, but this don't mean they didn't go through it. Everyone wants to identify with the struggle. Like like this victimhood mentality. Everyone wants to feel like they came through it. And they didn't even come through it. I mean, in, my, in my lifetime, all these people talk about like Studywood, Acres Home and all this stuff. Coming from my reference point, when I went to go see where they lived at, I was like, holy Christ. My roof was leaking, okay? We didn't have hot water, okay? And so when I saw what they was living in, I was like, man, y'all niggas is rich. I came from poverty. You over here identifying like you're poor with your mama buying you Jordans and your grandma buying you a gold chain. Nigga, I really don't have nothing. But they buy, you're buying into the narrative. You're letting people, you're letting America, you're letting the media control your narrative when you do that. Instead of saying, I'm finna do something about this. This is my current situation. This is what's going on. I have to do something about this. When I see black millionaires, black billionaires, and they still wear urban clothing and they still want to portray this. I'm from the same place you're from. I identify because I'm not wearing, I mean, the clothes you're wearing are still extremely expensive. These Balenciaga, all these name brand clothes, extremely expensive. And you think because you're in tune with hip hop culture, you're in tune with me. This is a fallacy. You guys are millionaires and you're protecting your money with lawyers, white lawyers. Your neighbors are probably white neighbors. You do not identify with the working person. You do not identify with the poor black man in America. You are separated. And just because you wear jewelry and try to say that you know the newest rap song, baby, we are two different kinds of black, okay? Check this out, though. What's up? They living in that fantasy world. So, yeah, you identify with the person they are when they get on Instagram, TikTok. That's what's going on. Everybody's living this fake life as if everything is fine and dandy. You see the pictures. You see the having fun. You see the different events and stuff going on. But when it comes to real life stuff, real life experiences that can change your life, then it's nobody's there for me. They're capitalizing off of my real life. And when they talk about cultural appropriation, all you rappers, all you actors, all you black billionaires and millionaires, you telling my story and you ain't coming back to where I'm from and giving me a goddamn dime. You, you son of a bitch. Niggas, man. Niggas. Niggas. Those that have been <laughs> oppressed will soon be the oppressors. It's disgusting because they want, man, when, when I see LeBron James come out talking about some Black Lives Matter, you built a school before you built a factory. How dare you? How dare you tell a mother and a father that their child is worth more than the parents? You give them a $100,000 education while they ain't, oh, you don't subsidize their housing, huh? These motherfuckers don't own the place in which they live, but they can go to school. This is some fucked up capitalistic mentality where you tell me that I deserve education, but I don't deserve a place to live. That's interesting, man. That's and, a right. Huh? That's a right. What? To, to have somewhere to live. It should be a human right. <laughs> It's not a human right. I've, I've known single mothers who are living in their cars, taking their kids to school every day, trying to fight truancy charges because, 
man, I ain't got no place to live. My ex is a fucking abuser and I can't live in one location because that nigga is stalking me and your stalker laws suck like a motherfucker. Like we, Ooh, man. we have destroyed the family through all this nasty rhetoric. And then when you see the symptoms of destroying the family, you don't know how to respond. You do not have the systems to respond. This is where the trauma comes from. No, they have the systems. They make it like that on purpose. I don't disagree with you. It's one-sided. I had a situation. Love my baby. The way things are set up is so biased. I love my women. But a lot of times they create an environment that's so pro-feminist movement that it creates a competition. And we're supposed to really be taking care of each other. See, I didn't grow up in the environment to where my grandmother was against my grandfather or my mother was against my father. But that's the environment we're in today. If the man or the woman is not how you deem them to be or not how Instagram deems them to be or not how the movies deem them to be. Goodbye. Adios, amigo. Adios. Amigo. Disposable. And, and, and as soon as America passed child support legislation in 1975 and made the father a commodity, you made him disposable. You made him disposable because now all of the ancillary benefits that I bring to the table, being able to teach my son how to ride a bike, being able to teach my son etiquette and how to behave, being able to be a reinforcer in the house when my wife makes a statement, I'm supporting that to double down, to be able to hold our children accountable. A family is an economic power system because my kids wash dishes and clean up for free. My wife cooks, and so we ain't got to go out and spend money. My children rake the leaves and cut the grass. We're building money by investing in each other, but as soon as you take away this family structure, man, now now I got Julio cutting my grass. But so, hold so. on, though. Hold on, though. I'm, I get the structure thing, right? But I guess call it old school, call it whatever you want to call it. I thought we was just working together, looking out for each other. Loving on each other. And hey, I see you've been working all week. Let me wash the dishes. Oh, my parents been busting their ass since I was born. Let me clean my room up when they ask me to. I might not want to clean it up all the time. But let me just do it this time because I see my mama, I see my daddy. Or I just see my mama or I just see my daddy in there tired as fuck. Hey, in this, in this give me culture, in this me first culture, in this narcissistic culture that we live in, you have to incentivize it. And if you don't understand how fa how important family is based on nostalgia and history and emotional connection, then let me break it down economically. You having a wife saves you money. You having children saves you money. A matter of fact, they make you money. If, make you, choose, you, money. if you choose to file your taxes and buy yourself a house, these things make you money. But you don't want to invest in yourself because you got these preconceived ideas on what a woman is or what a man is. And I don't want to do a big mama did. Or and I don't family. Wanna, family. Man. This is what family. Look, our family is supposed to look like the family on the housewives. You was raised by TV and you think that your life is supposed to be TV. Wake up, baby. That's a fantasy. And that's for young men, young women, old men, old women. If men and women do not start working together to have happy homes, we're going to destroy this great nation. And for all you folks who say y'all hate this nation, hey, I can tell because your behavior shows me that you don't even love yourself. And if I say that out loud, you get offended. But don't get offended, man. It's time for some truth telling. It's time to have honest conversations. I started this conversation that said me and my father got into a god dog on knife fight for what reason? Because he told me that I was a pit bull. He told me how the world would respond, and I was trained in a very specific way to be a very specific thing. When I make the statement that fathers need fathers, what are we teaching our children? How are we preparing our children for this world? Am I giving my sons the exact same trauma that my father gave me? Because you asked me the honest question. Yes, I am. And every day I try to combat these terroristic thoughts that allow strong men to prey upon younger men because we're afraid of competition. We have these ideas that you're supposed to listen to me because I'm an elder. I'm stronger than you. These are all narcissistic, egotistical ways. And how do we improve this? By having sweet strength. Colin Powell said sweet strength. He was one of the most bestest generals in the history of the world. We call him Uncle Tom because he was black in power. That's a whole nother conversation. That's a whole nother conversation. But this man said sweet strength, man. Diplomacy. Try to have a conversation before you drop a bomb on a person. And so just because I'm strong don't mean that I have to use my strength against you. This is to every father in America, a number Number one, if you're talking to a man who is older than you, treat that man like your father. And if you're talking to a man that is younger than you, then treat that man like your brother. Stop talking down to people as if you know everything. Man, I don't know shit. Except for I'm trying to survive every day in a world that looks at me as a pit bull. Crazy world we live in. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just going through it. I'm like, 
okay, yeah, he hit every point right there. I say, like, man, we was talking about how the competition. Right. Well, it's no communication. So we automatically are conditioned to believe that this person is trying to be one up on me or if I don't win this situation or whatever it may be, then I'm down. You're not down, man. We're trying to learn something right here. And the way a person communicates, the way a person expresses itself can come across aggressive versus passion. The most powerful companies in our nation, they merge, they synergize. They say, oh, you do that well? Well, we do this well. And now let's work together. But for some reason, men who are supposed to be the economic backbone of this great nation do not see the benefit of working with each other, do not see the benefit of having this conversation. This conversation for some young men who is having an altercation with their father, go have a conversation. It's about dialogue. It's about understanding what you want. Man, should nobody stand on top of you for any reason? I don't care what their name is. Father, Santa, God, ain't, no, so ain't nobody supposed to stand on top of you. I get it. It was a young cat I was talking to, man. And the only thing he would say was, they're not hearing me out. You just don't get it. And both parties have to understand that they don't know everything. I don't know everything. I need help. This is me. I need help. But understand, you need help too. And we motivate each other. You know what's so crazy? And, and it's not specifically, but my father came from a generation. If you say, I need help, that's you saying, I'm a bitch. That's right. their reference point. Me saying, I need help. Nigga, what kind of man needs some help? Nigga, why would I help another man? That's a fascinating thought process that's trauma and so right now all i believe in is all i believe in is building if you are a man in america you are a felon if you pay child support if you pay your taxes if you own a home if you serve this nation if you got a dick and two balls man come and do this work because america needs us to do this work and i don't give a shit what no woman has to say because once you stand up man all bullshit sits down for sure man that's exciting to me for sure that's exciting to me. You feel that shit? Man, you know why? <laughs> because when I get going like this, if you ain't on this, you're going to get the fuck out the room, for man. Because sure. I'm willing to fight for it and die for it. I'm telling you, man. Come on, man. That's trauma coming Ooh, back. Hold on. Hey, right, no, man. bro. You need a hug for that. That's, you need a hug for that. Raheem, you said. That's, bro, you, need, you need a hug for that. That's liberation. Yeah, it ain't peaches and cream all the time. That's liberation. It's not peaches and cream. Man, we've been walking around here tucking that dick for far too long, man. That shit's over. You, you said, I've been hiding my greatness for far too long. I'm not dumbing down for shit, man. It's over with. That's over with. God gave me these muscles and these brains for a reason. To strategically declare guerrilla warfare on all of you people who are against me. I got a whole pack of pit bulls. Nigga, where you at? I prefer the finesse game. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, but it's cool though. Like, I'm with that. Cause I might have to turn it on. I have to go visit my brother right here. You know what I mean? Turn it on. But oh, I love the finesse game. The greatest American alive, baby. You are the greatest American alive. Project Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> the greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. Greatest American alive. What's the levels like? Yo. I'm at four. I like it. I'm not sure where I'm at. Maybe. Yeah, about right there. Damn, he's toned in hard. That's too high? I don't want him to miss anything. No, no. It ain't too... I just make sure... Uh, don't want to bust it. Yeah, you just... 
Because once she once she started talking, like yeah. I think like four four is pretty good. Four is good. Wow, right there. Yeah, that's cool. That's solid. That's real solid. My chair to be comfortable. So I shut shut the fuck up. Put that hall on me. God damn it. Get behind. Get behind me, Satan, motherfucker. Whoever that is. Shit. Some motherfucker they made up. Niggas be so mad at me for saying some shit like that. Niggas be so mad at me for saying that something they made up. The devil is real. Yeah, nigga, it's you. God damn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you there. He right. It's your motherfucking ass. The devil. The devil. The devil said. The devil did. Did we? I let the devil. Why you? You <laughs> nigga, please. You the devil, motherfucker. Like, like uh, Sam, you yeah. say. You say you heard that dog? <laughs> nigga, I know that dog. You the dog, motherfucker. The greatest American alive. 